I'm on my way to the permission where we'd be relic hunting today, but I thought I'd stop off here and show you Gaines Mill as it looks today. Of course, the original mill uh, from the Civil War was burned, and sometime in the late 1800s, the mill was rebuilt and it functioned for many years. In the mid 1900s, the mill stopped operation. It was turned into a residence something cool about the old mill. They left the lower millstone in place and used it for one giant heavy coffee table. Anyway, Gaines Mill doesn't figure, the mill itself doesn't figure huge in the Gaines Mill battle. It's actually on the edge. The battle was named for Gaines Mill, but it didn't happen. The center of it was not right here. I just thought you'd like to get a look at what the mill looks like today. So let's head to our permission where we're going to be hunting today got a little ways to go to get there and we'll see what we can do a little bit of battlefield walking today You know, sometimes people will ask me uh, if I edit my videos to make it look like, you know, make it look better than it is. Um, get out of the truck and find a bullet within two or three minutes. And I just want to let you know that I don't do that. I do edit my videos. And if I'm finding a lot of bucks or a lot of trash, balled up aluminum foil, tin can, I will edit that out sometimes. But, when you watch one of my videos, you are watching the hunt chronologically. The first uh, target I dig is the first target on the video. And in the middle of the video, whatever I'm finding or not finding, that shows up. That's exactly what happened on the hunt. And the last target I find at the end of the day is the last target that you're going to see on the video. Uh-oh, got a little signal here. Mm, no, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to dig that one. I watched a relic hunting video the other night, and uh, the guy was saying, they're not all good days. I've been out here for hours and haven't found a thing. I mean, he was right on the money. Now, that sounds like a good target. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. That might even be a button. And this is the first target of the day. Yeah, that sounds like maybe a button. Oh, boy, that sounds a lot worse now. And this sounded good at first, but it doesn't sound so good now. Okay, so that first target turned out to be a buck. Okay, we got a piece of camp lead here. Okay, we knocked this one out of the hole. And I definitely see green, but I don't think it's button green. It might be just, just wire. Yeah, I think that's all it is. Yep, just some copper wire. So, that's that reality I was telling you about. That's a nail. I wonder if that's all that was in there. Well, I'm not superstitious, but I'm beginning to wonder if I jinxed myself. Started this video talking about how not all hunts are good hunts and, and haven't found anything Civil War except for a piece of uh, melted lead. Well, I'll be darned. I just said that and then I didn't see that little green in the hole. That's just a button back. There's no face on it. But there is a Civil War button. That's a start. Um, piece of aluminum. This is one of those signals that sounds like it could possibly be a button. Yeah, I think I touched it. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Hey, hey, hey. I see green. And it looks like a half circle there. You see green right there? You probably can't because it's in the shade. But I see green. I'm seeing green. <gasps> that looks even better. I feel like I see green. A green circle. No, I don't think so. I think it's a grommet. Nope, I think that is a button. <gasps> yeah, that looks like a mashed button. An eagle button mashed completely flat. Look at that. Can you see how flat that is? 
but I see the I see the shank on the back and I see I've got a face even though it's crushed down flat green circles yeah baby man I love a fall Virginia day when I left the house a few hours ago it was 45 degrees and now it's t-shirt weather sun is shining sky is clear now if we can just get our coil over some relics well I think we got our coil over a relic. I bet this is a buck. Uh, yep, another buck. This sounds much better. This is a bullet, I'm pretty sure. Look. 69 caliber round ball. First one of the day. This is an interesting signal because I'm getting a really good strong bullet signal in this hole, but I'm also getting a signal just a little bit beyond it, and that signal's not as good. A little buckshot. For some reason, I've really been letting the buckshot fool me today. I can usually recognize them and skip them, but I've been digging a lot of buckshot that I thought was a better signal. However, this one, I bet, is not a buckshot. Well, what, what? Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Here. No, that's a corn cob. No, it didn't. Must be aluminum foil. Doggone it. Yep, aluminum foil. All right, I'm getting fooled a lot today. All right, that's out of the hole. Uh-oh. Green roundness. Is that a button? Boy, if it is, it's a little one. That's, that's a rivet. Probably a rivet off of a cartridge pouch or a, or a, a percussion cap pouch. This one sounds pretty good. Not quite on it yet. Let's pop a plug up. Well, there's something in there, but there's also something here. Okay, so we got a 69 caliber round ball, but we've still got a signal down in that hole. Based on your experience, what do you think is still in that hole? My guess is the buck that went with this ball. All right, there's one of them, and there's still one down in there. Just because you pull something out doesn't mean there's not something still down in there. A relic hunter messaged me on the channel. He said uh, he was once hunting with a guy and they, they came across a covered up hole that still had a signal in it. And it was a gold pocket watch missing the back panel. A guy got a great signal and dug up the back panel of a gold pocket watch. But he didn't recheck the hole and he would have known that the entire pocket watch was still down in the hole. But he missed it because he didn't recheck his hole. Anyway, there's there's a a ball and two bucks so far. Still something in there. Oh, look at this. Second ball in that hole. So now we've gotten two 69 caliber round balls out of that hole. Another buck that went with those balls. So what's that? Four ball four bucks and two balls. Alright, I think that makes six. So two balls and the six bucks that went with it. One shovel full and the target came out. This is a, another buck. 22. A modern 22 shell. My experience tells me that this is going to be a bullet. I've always heard not all experience is good experience. A cat that sits on a hot stove will never sit on another hot stove. But neither will he sit on a cold one. Oh, there he is. Experience was right this time. 69 caliber round ball. It says it's right there. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, whoa, 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 whoa. Is that green? Hmm, it's hard to tell. Uh-oh. Hello, Betty. Hello. That might be a rim of a button. That is, does it have a face on it? No. Dog it. Just a button back. This sounds like a pretty, a really good signal. It sounds like it's very shallow. What do you see? I see a green circle. Looks more like a coin. Probably modern. Yep. A stinking Lincoln. I'm not sure what I think of this signal. I think it's either a buckshot or, or brass of some kind. Out of the hole, that's for sure. Have we got a J hook or have we got a piece of wire? We got a, oh, okay. That's a knapsack triangle. 
for some reason they're harder to find than uh, other pieces of knapsack. I don't know whether they were attached better or maybe every knapsack only had a couple of these where they had several hooks. I don't know. I'm going to call this one. I think this is a button. I do think this is a button. Keep your eyes peeled for white or green. Uh-oh. I think I see green right there. Hello. Yep. A little cuff size eagle button. Good face. All right. Another button. That's a pretty big signal. It might be a bullet. Actually, if this is a good target, I'm going to be a little bit worried because I was going to skip it. And darn if I don't see green. And I was going to skip this. Yes, sir. Well, see, that scares me a little because I was going to skip that target because I didn't like the way it sounded. Now, how many others have I skipped that were buttons? All right. It's an eagle button. None of them have been in really good shape today. Where I found a couple buttons all of a sudden. Daggone if that eagle ain't falling completely apart. What a shame. All right, there's an eagle button. There's a button back piece of aluminum. A stinking Lincoln. I'll spin that. Four round balls. Five bucks. Triangle off the backpack. 22 cartridge. An eagle button. Button back. Rivet with leather. And an eagle cuff button. Three buttons, two button backs before lunch. All right, that's a really nice, strong signal there. If you're interested it on the dais, it's running in the low 80s, 81, 84. That's going to be a 69 caliber round ball. Unfired, most likely. My sister and I were talking about relic hunting the other day. There were actually trenches in our yard after it rained. Um... It wasn't unusual at all to go out in the yard after it rained and to walk to the clothesline and back. You would definitely pick up at least two Civil War bullets. He's a camp lead. I'm going to take a risk and say this definitely sounds like a button to me. Or whatever it is, I think it's brass. I talk a lot about Cold Harbor, but I'm really never in Cold Harbor proper. When I say Cold Harbor, it could be... Mechanicsville, it could be, you know, the Watt House, Gaines Mill, the Garthright House. I just use that as a term to denote the huge battlefield and skirmish site of, of Cold Harbor and Gaines Mill. Let's see what's in this hole. I see green, but it doesn't look like button green. Oh, no. That looks like a broken button. Well, maybe not. Yeah, it's just a button back. You know, 150 years of plowing. It's a miracle any of them survive in decent shape. Dare I say it, but this sounds like brass to me. I don't know what it is, but it's brass. Okay, it's out of the hole. Well, it's taken us all day. It's probably about 2 o'clock, but there's our first three-ring Yankee bullet of the day. There's lead in the bottom. I don't know whether that's a bullet. Oh, there it is right in my hand. Or it might be, I guess that's just melted camp lead. Maybe we've already dislodged it. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Stinking Lincoln. And it looks like somebody dropped a whole bunch of modern coins here. Found two Lincoln pennies. And there's another one. There's another one. That's four. Man, that's a bunch of them, apparently. There's another one. All right, I'm going to get out of these pennies. Oh, I hit it with my digger, whatever it is piece of camp lead. This didn't start off sounding good, but as I dug, it got better. Yeah, there's some white right there. Well, it's not a bullet. It's a big piece of camp lead. Well, I might have a deep one here. There you go. Beautiful three ringer. The sand is just so good to them. It sounds like lead and not like brass. I thought we were closer than that. Maybe I've already dug it up. Looks like a green circle to me. Yeah, I think that's some kind of modern grommet or snap or something. So I don't know what this is. It could be iron masking something better. 
I might have missed digging it a little bit. Let's try over here. Something down there. Oh, it's deep. It's iron. Just a piece of nondescript plow. Like a piece of farm junk. But I have just run out of good targets. Man, it's a shame I'm not going fishing. That's a heck of a night crawler. Great day. That's a big boy right there. Whew. Need to go fishing. Is that green? Tell me that's green. And tell me that is not. Uh, it's probably a rivet. Yep, a rivet. Look at the leather. That's 150 year old leather still in that dirt clod. I'm running out of time, but I'm gonna dig a couple of more signals if I can get them. There he is. This actually is a good sounding target. It sounded like a button. A buck. All right, my truck is about 50 feet away and I need a good find to end my day with. Piece of lead maybe? Yeah, a piece of camp lead. I'm about 40 feet from the truck now. So maybe this will be the bullet that ends the day. There it is. Well, it's camp lead. I should have expected that. About 40 feet to walk to the truck. If we don't find something in that 40 feet, I gotta go. Well, the last 40 feet was unproductive. I've got nothing to complain about. I think we found a couple of buttons, a couple of button backs, that uh, triangle knapsack hook, a few uh, round balls and three ringers. Thanks for joining me on this relic hunt in historic Cold Harbor. And be sure to keep watching because we're going to bring out some old artifact from the archives and show you here at the end of this video. Until then, I'm the Battlefield Walker. Thanks for joining me. I think you're going to be glad that you stayed for this part of the video. I've got a relic found that's not all that impressive, but to me, it gives me the clearest sense of sympathy and connection to some Civil War soldier of any relic I've ever found. Before we get to that relic though, I wanna show you, no, go away. I guess this is an ambrotype of a Civil War soldier. I'm very fortunate in that I know who this man was. Uncle Aubrey was married to a lady named Magnolia Woody. Everybody called her Noli. Noli's grandfather was Benjamin Barker. And Benjamin Barker, served the Confederacy in the Civil War. And this is an ambrotype of that soldier. My father, relic hunting deep in a Civil War trench in Cold Harbor, he found the remains of an ambrotype frame. Obviously, there's nothing left of the image, but the idea that some Civil War soldier had a picture of his wife, his children, maybe his mom and dad, that he carried with him into battle. God only knows how far this photograph traveled. Up from Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, down from Massachusetts, Maine, Michigan, who knows? But some soldier brought the most precious thing he had, a memory of his family and carried it with him. And then to think that he lost it in a Civil War trench somewhere in Cold Harbor, Virginia. Was he shot and killed? Was he ordered to charge? And he left it behind so that it wouldn't get damaged? I doubt that, but who knows? And he took it with him and he lost it there in Cold Harbor. Did he lose his life as well? Or was he able to go home and be able to say, I lost the picture of you, but I've got you back. The story this could tell, to me, that's a profound idea. I appreciate those of you who have subscribed to the channel or maybe liked a video. That helps. And we'll go relic hunting again, maybe a week, 10 days from now. Until then, I'm the Battlefield Walker. Be good, say your prayers.